Good afternoon and good evening. Wherever in the world you are watching, this is the 2020 World Car Awards live stream. It is a very different setting and a whole new way for us to be sharing with you the results of the most comp com comprehensive, credible, and truly global automobile honors. All results will soon be received via email to all our jurors around the world, and we will be sharing those results with you in real time. The World Car Awards are the number one awards program in the world and follow an annual calendar that sees eligible vehicles worldwide compete for the coveted trophies across five categories. 86 distinguished international automotive journalists from 24 countries make our jury. Here's what's happened so far. So any of you tweeting, posting, or sharing any of this or any of the upcoming wins as well, please do use the WCOT hashtag. That's hashtag WCOTY. And also remember to tag us. That's the World Car Awards. The New York Auto Show is where we typically have our grand culmination of this annual process. But given the situation around the world and the fact that the uh, New York show was also pushed to August, we decided to go ahead with the uh, announcement and the planned date of that announcement too and discuss the results as they were released on our website. We even have representatives from most of our top three world finalists on standby for some potential Q&A if they win. We have five categories to take you through. The 2020 World Car Design of the Year, World Performance Car, World Urban Car, World Luxury Car, and then the World Car of the Year 2020. Now, this is the World Car Awards, and so I'm coming to you along with, uh, well, with, there are four locations around the globe that we are coming to you from. So I am Siddharth Vinayak Patankar, coming to you live from New Delhi in India. I'm also joined from the United States by Scotty Reese, who's in Austin, Texas, and George Noteris, who's in Los Angeles, California. Also with me is Carlos Sandoval, who is in Mexico City. We have some of the finalists from our top three across each category with some of my co-hosts today. And yes, we do have a global audience with us, no doubt. Thank you for joining us. And so that is also my cue to go to the other side of the planet, to George. Hi, George. Or Good actually, morning. should I say bye, George? Good because that, that looks like quite the exciting lineup behind you. How's it going? Well, I'd say it's a pretty good day here in the office when I have these two cars here because it's a unique time or a really unique category. This is the performance car category, and right. one manufacturer has completely dominated it, and that is Porsche. Now, I will come back to George, as I said, but I want to quickly go to Scotty as well, who's coming to you from the roof of her home office in Austin, Texas. Howdy, Scotty. Hi, Sid. Uh, good morning from Texas. Good afternoon to you in India, and hello to everyone watching. Um, 
I am socially distancing here. It's just me and these three cars um, and on needles and pens here to see who wins the finalist for the most coveted award of today's announcement, World Car of the Year. So these are the three contenders. We also welcome Carlos, uh, as I promised. Uh, he's with us too. Hola, mm -hmm. Carlos. And I hope you and your family are safe and well. Hola to you as well. Yeah, that is correct. We are all safe. The Mazda CX-30 oh. is made here in Mexico, and also the Mazda 3, by the way. A few months ago, we drove the Mazda CX-30 to our LA test drives because Mexico one, was one of the few markets with the car on sale at that time. Um, so we drove for more than 3,000 kilometers from Mexico City to Los Angeles in order to our fellow jurors to evaluate the car. Also, one year ago, we drove the Volvo XC40 to the New York Auto Show. So, yes, as you can see, well, I like driving. And, well, um, thinking about it, it's 2020, and the, it's important to evaluate how relevant urban cars have become of late, especially in markets like Latin America, India, Southeast Asia, and Europe. And uh, you know what? Uh, as we were talking over there about the urban category, uh, we mentioned that we do have other contenders there as well. And uh, so... Uh, muchas gracias, Carlos. We'll go across to uh, George again, who's uh, on the other side of his Motorman studio. Uh, George, it's uh, the compacts in the urban category now, isn't it? Uh, yes, sir. We're going to the completely different side of the spectrum here. We go from performance and Porsche to two EVs. What's so interesting about this segment is uh, we've got three in the segment. Granted, I couldn't get one of the cars because it doesn't. it's not sold in North America. That's the Volkswagen. Uh, but the two that I did get, the propulsion systems are electric. And what's interesting about this segment here, or really I should say about the overall World Car Awards, is we decided to go away from talking specifically about the propulsion system, like a green car, and say what is really the mission about the car, instead of saying how do we get there. So in this case, these are the urban cars. You know what? Uh, I'm excited. Now, we've got to get this thing going because it's time to take you into the very first category. So let's get on with what you're really waiting for. The first category is the World Car Design of the Year. And to take us through that, let's go right back to Scotty. Thank you, Sid. So I'm here with one of the nominees for World Car Design of the Year, um, which is the Mazda 3. But it's interesting to note that uh, who has won in the past, what this, uh, the winner of this category will stand against. Jaguar Land Rover has won five times. Adia, oh, sorry, uh, Audi and Citroen have won twice, and this would be a repeat for Mazda if they win versus Porsche, the Taycan, and the Peugeot 208. Let's look at the video of these nominees. I'm thrilled to share that the winner of the World Car of the Year Design Award is the Mazda 3. I have a statement from Akira Maramoto, president and CEO of Mazda Motor Corporation. Before accepting this prize, Mazda Motor Corporation would like to express our sympathy for all of those affected by the novel coronavirus. We are truly honored to be able to receive the 2020 World Car Design Award in this special year, marking the 100th anniversary of Mazda's foundation. We will continue providing our customers with unique designs, technologies, and experiences. Congratulations, Mazda. Well, uh, Scotty, thank you for this. I am very excited to move on to what is probably my most exciting category, and that is the performance car category, which we've discussed is dominated by the folks at Porsche. So uh, what's interesting here is we've got three different ways in which Porsche is arriving at performance. So let's find out what the nominees are. The winner is 
the new very tech, very flash Porsche Taycan. Sir, welcome to our show. Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome to our show. Congratulations on your win with the Taycan. Well, thank you very much. And this really in the middle of bad times we have with the coronavirus on the world. No, there's no doubt about it. It's definitely a challenge we're facing in the world today. And that everybody, including all of us here, have had to pivot in a way to do this. But we still want to get excited about cars because at the end of the day, we're a group of car enthusiasts. And this is this was a different approach for you guys. Uh, can you share with us one major development difference, how you approach the Taycan as opposed to other programs with Porsche? Maybe uh, the most challenge, challenging uh, thing was uh, to have this Taycan 100% uh, Porsche, uh, despite having the battery uh, sitting in the uh, bottom of the car. And to get this car as sleek and as close to the road, especially the driver, uh, we had uh, developed a special design of the battery with the so-called foot garage to get the passengers as low on the road or as close to the road as possible to give this car the typical Porsche driving experience. And on the other height, uh, side, have a sleek uh, car that looks typical like a Porsche with uh, our so-called fly line that falls uh, all the, th through the back. Well, 2020 World Urban Car. Actually, this is our youngest category, introduced just four years ago to recognize the growing relevance of compact vehicles all over the world. BMW, Volkswagen, and Suzuki have won it in the past, and today we may have another win for Volkswagen or a first ever winner in this category. These are the three cars that made it through our two rounds of voting. Kia Soul EV, Mini Cooper Electric SE and the Volkswagen T-Cross. And we just received the official press release, the 2020 World Urban Car is the Kia Soul EV. Congratulations, Kia, and joining us for sharing this prize. Michael Cole, President Kia North America Motors, uh, uh, North America. Michael, good morning and congratulations. Hi, uh, good morning. Thank you. This is great news. I'm uh, early morning here in California, so uh, good to get some good news right now. We're very, very happy. Thank you to all the jurors for. Uh, giving Soul EV this uh, great accolade. Congratulations to Kia. It's the first ever Korean product to win at the World Car Awards. So this is very historic for all of us at the World Car Awards. Congratulations so far then to Kia, Mazda, and of course Porsche with the Taycan, the all-electric sports car. Very excited. And so the next award we want to introduce to you is the World Luxury Car of the Year 2020. And typically, it's an all-German affair. Well, the category itself debuted in 2014, with Mercedes-Benz having won it three times. Audi has won twice, BMW has won once, and that means this year, too, Mercedes could add to its tally, or we welcome another German. Here are the final three. It's the Mercedes-Benz EQC, the Porsche 911, and the Porsche Taycan. And the winner for the World Luxury Car 2020, it's a double win for Porsche with the Taycan. So uh, a lot of people expected that to perhaps happen, and uh, no doubt about it, extremely, extremely strong here. And uh, 
we got to see if we can once again connect with uh, Dr. Steiner because uh, this is the second win now for uh, Porsche. Dr. Steiner, congratulations, and uh, you must be feeling very happy right now. Yes, I'm very happy, and I'm proud of my whole team. Speaking of which, uh, this car is in so many ways the, almost like a modern icon for Porsche. It's almost as representative of where the brand is today as the 911 has always been for the brand. Uh, speak to us a little bit about that. Indeed, um, the Taycan um, should and will be our icon designed, let me say, for the new world. And it's indeed not only a very sporty one, but it's also a luxury car. And now, drum roll, please. It is the big one. The one that we've all been dying to know since, the began, uh, since this whole process began. Uh, the final three that are in the running, you can see them with Scotty. Uh, she just sort of showed us those three cars. The Kia Telluride, the Mazda 3, and the Mazda CX-30. The first time that we had two cars from one brand making it to the top three for our finalists for the World Car of the Year. All right, so those are then the top three. It's been a huge, grueling process, and all those three cars should feel very proud at this point. The manufacturers behind them, the teams behind them, but only one can win, and it is time now to reveal that winner to you. Let me open this up. Exciting moment, folks. I can tell you this is going to make a lot of waves around the world. The winner for the World Car of the Year 2020 is... The Kia Telluride, it is the car that many people expected might take it all, and it has done just that. It beat the odds. You had two Mazdas in the running, and yet Kia has come from behind and taken the big trophy. It's a double win for Kia because the Soul EV won Urban Car of the Year, and now you've got the Telluride as well. That is, of course, with Scotty right there in Austin on the rooftop. But before anything else, uh, we'd like to get in Kia's management back here onto the, uh, onto the broadcast. Remember that uh, we had Michael Cole speaking with us just a short while earlier. Uh, we're going to go back to Michael right now, President Kia Motors America. Michael, this is absolutely stunning. It is great news. Many, many congratulations. Thank you. Uh, we're obviously ecstatic with the win. Um, just and we all need good news at times like this. We're obviously happy to, to have this. And again, thank you to uh, the team there that have. Uh, made this selection and I've got to thank all of our team obviously there are so many people involved in this project um, particularly our design team here in California under Tom Cairns done a great job uh, we think we bought uh, the perfect vehicle to the market at the right time a big bold boxy mid-size SUV uh, it's been a, an absolute storm for us so uh, thank you for the award we're, we're thrilled with it really really pleased really happy thank you this does make a statement in so many ways, uh, Michael. I have to, uh, you know, sort of also remind our viewers um, and everyone who's watching, this is firstly the first time ever that we have a Korean car winning World Car of the Year. It's also back to, uh, you know, your your sort of petrol head grunt machine. Uh, as you mentioned, this is that big SUV. It's not like what we've seen in the past with EVs sort of, you know, uh, going ahead and taking the big prize. Uh, the time you brought this car to market, I know, especially in North America, there was a lot riding on it. It was also very crucial for that market. Talk us through that process of, uh, you know, when it finally got the green light to go to market. Yeah, sure. Uh, you're right. It was it was important for us because this is still the second biggest segment in the U.S. market, the midsize SUV. And we didn't have a vehicle in that territory. So it was an important vehicle for us in terms of, you know, establishing ourselves as a, as a real top tier brand, a, a, a tier one brand in the US. And we, we did it with a vehicle we think, you know, really met all the requirements of, of the consumer, not only in terms of the design 
the performance, the technology and the safety features, of course, Kia's great value, long warranty, and the reaction we had to the vehicle from consumers and, of course, from our dealers uh, showed that we'd got it just right. Um, and I guess this is recognition from all of the, the, the jurors around the world uh, that they think we got it right too. So it was an important vehicle for us in terms of our you know, opportunity here in the U.S., not only from a sales perspective, but also from a brand position. Thank you all for joining in. Now, we're in different time zones bringing this to you. As everybody has said, we would love your feedback. So please, please send that in in truckloads. And uh, we would, of course, definitely. In fact, if you count uh, our tabulator and our, you know, very meager production team in Toronto, then you've got uh, five locations that we're coming to you from today. So we've been very careful with how we have put this broadcast together for you. Uh, staying socially distant, staying completely sort of separated from each other and yet bringing you what is undoubtedly a lot of very key information to the automobile industry worldwide. It is the World Car Awards and we do have our five winners for 2020. So thank you so much for watching. And as Carlos said, and as everybody has been saying, stay home, stay safe, take care and good night. 